So to understand the function of rods and cones, let's start by uh, understanding the different environments uh, that vision operates in. And it, it operates over a very vast range of, of light intensities, from very dark moon, moonless nights to, uh, to the brightest sunny day. And this just shows you, this is probably not even scotopic. This is a, this is a full moon, a night on a full moon. You don't see much. You see a little bit of this on, a, on a, the, the um, scotopic range goes all the way down to much dimmer than this. But uh, showing you a black screen is, is not that interesting. <laughs> um, and, and this would be in sort of in the middle or, or top of the mesopic range. And then here's the photopic range. So what do you see? You see that the colors are extremely vibrant here. And the detail is much, uh, is, is much greater here. So you see, um, you see the, the, the crispness of, of uh, a lot of detail, whereas here the detail is, is, is much more um, blurred. OK, so scotopic, mesopic, and photopic. And what we're going to see is that in scotopic conditions, vision is supported only by rods. In photopic conditions, only by cones, and in the mesopic intermediate, it's 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 the rods are on their way down, and the and the cones are coming up. All right. So th one big difference between the rods and the cones is their anatomy. If you folk, if, if you zoom in on this area, here are the photoreceptors. Here's the cell body. Here's the uh, synaptic terminal right here. Here's the inner segment where all the um, manufacturing of, of proteins occurs. And, and it's right next to the inner segment that the first uh, disks are made for the outer segment. Now, these disks take a different form in the cones and the, uh, and the rods. In the rods, the disks are entirely uh, um, internalized within the cytoplasm, but within the cones, there is an, a, a continual invagination, so the disks are, are um, contained on actual um, layers of, of plasma membrane. Rods and cones have different uh, opsins in them, and therefore they absorb light of different intensities at a, with a different probability or different distribution of, of, of responses. So here is, uh, a, a, on, along the x-axis, I've, I've graphed the wavelength, and this is in nanometers. The shortest wavelength lights are violets. Down here is ultraviolet. We can't see ultraviolet. Snakes can, but we can't. So uh, down here is violet, and it comes up into blues. And then there are, are uh, greens and yellows, oranges, and reds. And so you go from blue to green to red with progressively longer wavelength. Now remember, the wavelength has no color. So what's graphed down here is the color that would typically be perceived by this wavelength of light. Not necessarily, but typically. All right, so the short wavelength cones have maximal absorption and maximal um, responses in uh, to wavelengths that elicit a perception of, of violet or blue. Whereas the medium and long uh, length cones are much more responsive to longer wavelength light. Now you can see that these two cones are very similar. And in, in a lot of animals, um, uh, there, there is a short wavelength cone and a long wavelength cone. In primates and, and in us, there has been a duplication of this uh, cone in so that there are two long wavelength co cones. One is more medium length, but it is really, you were talking about a very small difference. So this was a gene duplication, um, and, but it does give us some ability to detect colors. Most notably, it gives us the ability to detect a ripe piece of fruit from an unripe piece of fruit. So green and red, the difference between green and red is, is highlighted by having these two cones, even though their absorption is very close. And we'll look at that when we look at color. Um, 
In contrast, the rod uh, absorption is uh, intermediate, but there's only there's only one of them, and so uh, rod uh, rod vision does not support color vision. Only cone vision supports uh, uh, color vision. All right, here is the distribution of rods and cones. First, I want to just highlight this incredibly beautiful um, uh, micrograph from Anita Hendrickson at University of Washington. And what you're seeing is the pit in the center of the, uh, of the retina. This is called the fovea. And at the fovea, that's the very center of the macula. So the macula is about five, five, six, seven degrees. The pit is the central one, one, one and a half degree, maybe two degrees. And, and at that pit, what you see is that all of these, these are ganglion cells, these are bipolar cells. They've all been pushed over to the side so that you have this big explosion in photoreceptors. Here's the choroid, here's the uh, pigment epithelium, this dark area is pigment epithelium. Here are the photoreceptor bodies, cell bodies and their outer segments right next to the pigment epithelium. Out here are the bipolar cells, here are the ganglion cells, here's the vitreous humor, light is coming up this way. So right at the fovea, there's this incredible concentration of photoreceptors, but it's not a, a, um, it's not a random collection of photoreceptors, they are all cones. All of the photoreceptors at the fovea are the cones. So, or all the cones, all the photoreceptors at the fovea are cones. So here is, in this orange color, is uh, the distribution of cones. And you can see that there's a peak right here at the fovea. It comes down. And way out in the periphery, you have very few cones. In the distribution of rods is, uh, conversely, there are none in the fovea. And they are greatest, much greater. There's a lot of rods. Uh, but they're um, concentrated out in the periphery, reaching a maximum density about 15 degrees off of, um, off of, off of the center of, of vision. All right, so let's try and understand what this all means about f for uh, rod and cone, the difference between rod and cone uh, vision. Well, first, you, you already know that rods are going to be used in scotopic conditions, and they, and that's good because they're much more sensitive than our cones. Rods take one photon uh, on average to excite them, whereas cones take maybe five, five or ten photons before they they have a chance of being excited. So, um, so let's say you're. You're in the dark. It's a dark, dark night. It's not. There's no. There's relatively little light pollution, and you want to find a star. What are you gonna? How are you gonna find that star? You're in scotopic conditions. There's not much light. You're trying to detect a small amount of light. Are you gonna look right where you want to see it? How effective is that gonna be? If you look directly at the place where you think you're going to see that star, you will be foveating that place. And the only thing available to catch that, those photons is cones, and they are not going to do it. So bad, bad strategy. You want to find the star? Look 15 degrees off of it, and you will see it using the highest density of your rods, all right? Now, on the other hand, let's say you want to read a text. Do you want to look 15 degrees off of it? No. You want to look directly at it using that incredibly high concentration of cones. So that's the kind of uh, a difference. And, and I just want to go over to the board and, uh, and be a little more explicit about the differences between rods and cones. Uh, rods have a very high sensitivity to light, whereas cones have a much lower sensitivity to light. Rods have a, are, are slow. They're even slower than cones. Cones are faster. So, and, and how, can you, how can you quantify that? So if you take a, a, a series of, of snapshots 
and you try to make essentially a flip book of them. You're, you're taking a series of snapshots, you're presenting them at some rate, and you're saying, does this, does this appear to be a continuous uh, scene? Does it appear to be a movie? Do you, see, do you see it as one continuous scene? And that's called the flicker rate. So we don't, the uh, computer screens, or at least the old computer screens, used to flash on a, a, a scene every uh, about 50, 60 times a second. And we don't see the times when that, that in between those flashes, because that is the, uh, that's the flicker rate. And the flicker rate for uh, using cones is about 55 hertz. We see a, a continuous image. For rods, it's, it's only 12 hertz. So this is a much slower, every scene lasts a lot longer, and so you can, you can present scenes at a much slower rate, and they still look as though they are um, they're from one continuous event. Okay. Uh, can you read with rods? Well, the answer is no, you cannot. So if, if you're using your rods, uh, you, you won't be able to read. You would have to have uh, letters the size of trees. You can't, you can't see the, those fine forms because the, uh, the rods are, are, have these large receptive fields. They, they, they simply tell you that there's light in this area. They do not have no high acuity, no high acuity. And this, yes, because there is high acuity. Um, how would you know whether you could read or not? How would you know whether you're in, you're using your rods or your cones? Well, if you're in a, in a situation where there is anything colored, you will see that in, when you're in scotopic conditions, you will see no color. You'll see none, you black and white. In mesopic conditions, you'll see muted colors, faded colors. And in photopic conditions, you will see vibrant colors. You're going to be best off uh, seeing um, reading when you're using your cones, when there is color. And here, there is no color. OK? So rods cannot, you do not see uh, color using your rods. You can see color using your cones. The highest concentration of rods is 15 degrees off of the uh, of the fovea and the highest concentration of uh, cones is uh, at the fovea. Now, I want to emphasize that the difference between rods and cones is ever so much more than color. Color is a really good way to figure out whether you're using your rods or your cones, but the importance of having cones is illustrated, I think, very well by a condition called congenital achromatopsia. And in congenital achromatopsia, individuals have rods, but they don't have cones. And their problem is not that they don't have color vision. Their problem is that they don't have high acuity vision. That is, the, that is really the problem. And because they don't have high acuity vision, their eyes never learned to, they never learned to make uh, perfectly accurate eye movements, and so they have abnormal eye movements, and they are also um, severely, uh, they have severely poor vision. Um, so that, I think that illustrates the importance of rods and cones. Yes, color is a shortcut to know whether you're using your rods or you're using your cones, um, but, but the rod and cone supported vision, which take two different pathways through the retina and through the, um, uh, the central nervous system, um, they, uh, they are so much more important than, than simply whether you see color or not. Speaking of color, let's now talk about color blindness. <laughs>